My guest is Jonathan McEwen, the Chief Executive of the Australian Water Association. Good to be with you. Thanks, Ellen. The association has a national program called Channeling Change. What's that about? The program called Channeling Change is what the Australian Water Association is contributing to not only the water sector here in Australia, but also regionally across Southeast Asia. It's really about empowering women and about embracing diversity by actually having a new approach to inclusiveness within the workplace. And how would you, if you were to you know, be very honest about it, with a very clear eye looking out across the water industry, how is it going with uh, gender equity and with inclusion? Well, look, I think there's been a, a good start, but it is only a start. One of the things that somehow concerns me is people in the sector are now talking about something called unconscious bias. I would contend there is still so much conscious bias across the water sector that we need to address that before we can go into the luxurious zone of talking about <laughs> unconscious bias. Uh, wh how, wh what does conscious bias look like? Conscious bias means that when people think about representing their organisation, who do they send to a meeting at the Australian Water Association? Who do they send to sit on panels? It is extraordinary how much gender is still seen as an issue because of the people they're selecting and putting forward. It is extraordinary as the National Peak Water Association, how many of our panels that are brought together still have a dominance of men? How many representatives actually attend our functions, our conferences, and their majority are all males? Why is that? It's not because there are not women within the workforces that are capable of representing them. It's this conscious bias that people have towards what was and still is in many ways a very traditional profession. But it's a traditional profession that is showing signs of change and a willingness to embrace it. What we really need to do in this channeling change program is put a bit of fuel on the fire to encourage much greater diversity of thought. Because this whole program really is about embracing the advantages of diversity of thought. And whether that diversity comes from embracing people with different religious backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, age, sexual preference or disability, the contribution of those people from a diverse background can make to a traditional approach to a water business is enormous. Embracing that change not only connects you with your customers more accurately, but it enables the organisation and the enterprise to really expand the way it approaches its own endeavours. Mm. Diversity of thought. I mean, yours is a traditional business. You could, you could imagine people inside the industry thinking, look, precision engineering and reliability is what we're about. You don't need diversity of thought. That's what you need. Well, there, therein lies one of the conundrums. It's an industry that's being very rapidly disrupted by modern technology, new techniques, new processes, new science. All of those elements need to be embraced quickly, not complacently. We're not talking about a five-year change. We're talking about months and certainly within a 12-month phase. The water industry is radically changing. The best way to change with those advantages is to embrace diversity of thought that can come from so many different backgrounds. What drives complacency, do you think? I mean, if, if, if in any industry, uh, as an industry leader, what's your take on that? I mean, any industry that knows it's being disrupted, you do see uh, you know, two responses. A, a, a real complacency, and you, and you often see like the Uber run over the top of the taxi industry, mm. right? Or you see a sudden prioritisation of the need for rapid cultural change. Like what drives complacency and what drives change? Well, look, I think in Australia there are a couple of things that drives that unfortunate complacency. The first I'd say is that most of us as Australians know how privileged we are to live in this country because we rightly see ourselves as a first world country. We pride ourselves on being one of the best educated countries on the planet Earth. And yet, 
behind that facade of first world success lies extraordinary contradictions across society and across the water sector. That can lead to a complacency. The second aspect, I'd say it's a very personal and individual approach to what we're talking about. We're talking about a major cultural change, certainly across our workforces, but more widely than that, across the community. So individuals can often sit back and take the lazy approach where they say, yes, we, are, we acknowledge diversity in the benefits, but someone else will do it. We all need to recalibrate the way that we cognitively approach this issue of diversity. And some good examples are coming through the water sector. For example, I was up at Unity Water, one of our um, large water utilities in Queensland last week. They have a new recruitment program that requires the people who are doing the recruiting to ask themselves in the panel one question. How will this new recruit help strengthen our diversity? Now that conscious effort to really recalibrate the approach to recruitment is a really good example of breaking that complacency. And when you start to see organisations where they have embedded um, the mechanics of change, the necessary levers of change within their recruitment, within how their managers manage, within a whole range of the systems of the business, what's common to that? Is it um, the leader saying, this is how we're going to do business every day. Is that what it takes? Well, I think it does take strong leadership in any organisation. You need a leader who really is passionate about the advantages of diversity and passionate about ruling out and eliminating the discrimination that has occurred in our sector or across our society. By driving that change, you're really empowering employees and stakeholders within your own enterprise to feel more confident to speak up about the advantages that can be obtained through a better diversity. So it's very much an individual-led approach which can lead to a very major cultural change across the organisation that has that very beneficial approach of empowering those to feel confident about contributing so much more. And thinking about uh, Australia's role uh, in the region, in the Asia-Pacific region, if we start to make um, big changes, permanent changes in this area, how much of a leadership role can we play? Well, without being at all patronising to our neighbours, many of our neighbours in Southeast Asia look to Australia because we are this first world country, continent in the midst of this fastest growing region in the world. Our contribution on this is to show the advantages and to show the leadership to embrace much more gender diversity in our management structures, in our delivery mechanisms and our engagement with the community through women. This is a very important push of the Australian Government through their aid program and the Australian Water Association is playing our part to help position the water sector across these fast emerging economies but particularly to do it in a way that transfers knowledge and power to women in these developing economies around the management of their water services. You know we've been talking about um, gender equality and diversity in workplaces since I entered the workforce. It's, the pace has been very slow. Um, there is a sense that it's quickening. Are you optimistic and what sort of time frame do you think we're looking at for change? Well, without programs like Channeling Change, I'm less optimistic because I think we can all sit back and think, we've got a busy job today, we haven't got time to embrace this. We really need to put some force behind what we're thinking to drive this change. So in terms of change, this kind of cultural change will take time. But by embedding more women across the organisations, accepting younger recruits, accepting more diversified recruits into organisations, it'll help institutionalise that recalibration of how we embrace diversity. That can take five to ten years, but the change and the benefits not only to the environments within which we all work, but to the bottom lines of those enterprises that take it are vastly multiplied by the efforts they've got to go through to get them. So in terms of taking that message and that, those learnings about diversity and inclusion to the region, is channeling change the vehicle for doing that? It is. It's a very strong vehicle and we've already had many examples up in Asia and we've had a delegation of 94 water professionals who we took into Vietnam. One of the things we did there was to conduct a 
Women in Water workshop, which talked about what Australia's done with empowering women in the water sector and shared stories about the benefits of much better engagement with women. That really sent a powerful message, but we also learnt a lot about the role of women in the Vietnamese water sector, which was not only inspiring, but really educational for those who are listening to it. We've taken the installation of new water treatment facilities into remote parts of Asia. And this program is about improving the water quality for those in the villages and remote areas. We've done it in a way that enforces the engagement of women to learn about how they manage those new kiosks, the new water uh, improvements, and then how they can turn that into a viable and sustainable economic business for the benefit of the community. And it's women that we're empowering. And it's women who are leading this engagement and the installation and the maintenance of these water facilities. We're expanding that not only in Vietnam, but we're also now looking at expanding this channeling change empowerment of women program across Indonesia. And we're doing it, Ellen, through not only taking private sector representatives, but we've also got a twinning program for our water utilities in Australia to be twinned with water utilities up in Asia that enables that transfer of knowledge and experience from the Australian water sector across to these developing parts, which really has done enormous amount for the empowerment of women, which is a very essential element of the Australian government's foreign aid program. Mm. It's a wonderful program. Thanks so much for talking about it. Thanks, Ellen.